Hello and welcome to the Egg Banana Podcast. I'm Ryan. And I'm Mark. And I'm Edward. So, in today's topic, or today's episode, we're going to be talking about learning uh, a foreign language uh, other than your mother language. And since the three of us had some experience, hopefully we will uh, provide some uh, interesting tips and some uh, guides in how you can go about learning a language and how to improve what you have already have learned. So, um, as for me, uh, I've, I've been learning a language, I guess, in high school. Um, I took one year in Spanish, and then uh, I didn't really learn any other language until um, right before moving to Taiwan. So, and I know for me, um, what I realized um, after studying Chinese here in Taiwan, I realized uh, it's actually really hard to learn a language and be um, proficient and to improve on a language if you're not in that environment where you're using it every day. So I don't know, do you guys agree with that or do you guys have any other um, experiences or any other methods and how to learn a language? Yeah, sure. I mean, definitely immersion, um, like to immerse yourself in a situation, um, an environment, it's definitely helpful. Um, I think probably after you get into like, maybe if you've learned a couple of languages, two, three languages or so on, it gets easier for you to teach yourself another language. So maybe it's possible, uh, depending on the methods that you use, that you don't actually need to go to the country or, uh, or it, fully immerse yourself like you could do it at home say for example like um let's say i wanted to learn uh mandarin and i'm not in a mandarin speaking country but still you could uh, do a lot of things to immerse yourself into the language already um you could watch uh movies or tv shows um only in that language you know youtube you could just watch videos that are in, in your target language uh, music as well, just listen to music in the, in your target language and so on. Of course, these things are not necessarily for beginners, but it starts to help your ear, I think, a bit. You get more familiar with the all you hear around you all day long is is that tar- uh, is your target language. So I think that is something that that could help um, some people. Obviously, some languages like Mandarin or Japanese, Korean, that they use other writing systems uh, could be more difficult, but um, once you get to a certain level, you could try turning your computer or your phone into the, like the system language into your target language and really just start forcing yourself to use uh, that language more, I think. So in that case, you might not need to immerse yourself as much, but um, definitely that is a faster way for a lot of people. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, you know me, I've, I've, uh, I really love languages, obviously. I'm a language lover. My... my uh, uh, handle here and I've lived in seven countries including my my home country and I've you know I've studied several languages in each each country so I do think it definitely helped uh, living there uh, but after like I said after a while once I got more experience with learning a foreign language I started to, to learn how to teach myself even even if I was by myself and didn't really have any other native speakers to speak with yeah how about you, Edward? What's your experience? Well, I'll be happy to answer that, but I'm sure the audience would like to know. Uh, besides impeccable English, what are the other languages that you speak? I'm just curious. Or did you want to devote that later? I wasn't sure. <laughs> um, that's fine. I, I can briefly just um, touch on that real quick. Um, yeah, so I I started with, um, like Mark, I studied started with Spanish in high school, but I didn't take it uh, too seriously. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it took... I don't remember. It was less than a year. I don't know if it was one semester, two semesters, whatever, something like that. I, I think I got pretty good grades, but it wasn't really, you know, you, you just study for like to get a good grade on the test or something like that. And then you don't use it and you just memorize a bunch of words. So it's funny, like when I hear Spanish now, 
I understand a lot of words, but I don't speak Spanish. You know, it's it's kind of mm. strange for me. Um, but right. yeah, when I was like uh, 17 or 16, 17, 18 years old, I got really into Asian culture and I started picking up uh, Japanese and a little bit later on started uh, getting into like Korean and Mandarin and 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 stuff like that but um so if you ask me what languages do i speak uh, aside from english i would say mostly just mandarin and japanese but i've also studied korean and thai and i know a little bit of like uh some filipino or uh some different dialects in the philippines like Visaya, yeah uh, Cebuano, hmm. like that um so yeah mostly Asi asian Asian languages. Um, I I didn't really study any European languages aside from the Spanish in high school. Yeah, cool. All right. Um. Uh. Well, basically, since you know Mark is over here listening to stats, I guess I should do the same thing. Basically, um, where I grew up in Connecticut, they give you like uh, for elementary school, first grade to sixth grade. Uh, you learn French, so I like to say I conquered French, but I did it. It's just kind of like bonjour, which is like hello. Je m'appelle Edward. My name is Edward. Très bien. So it's like kind of like like the cliche French. And obviously, if I was like in Canada or France, if I said that to people, they would it would be like, oh my god, and I'm like sacre bleu, don't don't talk to me, <laughs> you you, don't, you know that kind of thing. And then it's interesting uh, when you go to when I went to my high school, they go they 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 give you the option of either continuing in. French or Spanish. So my my you know my seventh grade mind was like you know what I've already conquered French. Let's go with the Espanol. So then it's, it's the same thing. So it's like Hola, cómo estás? So it's like Hi, how are you? Mi nombre es Eduardo. Uh, my name is Edward. Uh, Donde estás? El cuarto de baño. Where's the bathroom? Or I I, I kind of put a mix on it because I'm a little bit funny. I'll be like Donde estás? Las chicas muy caliente. Where are the spicy chicks? Or where are the hot chicks? <laughs> And then um. Uh, my parents, I don't know if you could tell, but my family is actually Taiwanese. And so growing up, going back to what Mark said, the easiest time to probably learn a language is when you're, you know, a baby to whatever age, you know, adolescence. But for me growing up, uh, because I live in a predominantly Caucasian um, area and go to school with like just Caucasian people, I would go to school all day from like, I don't know, nine to three, go home and then just speak English all day. And then when I went home, my parents, would speak Mandarin to me or Chinese. And then they would also send me to like Chinese school every Sunday. And then I don't know what it is. Like, I think it's like at that time, it's kind of like the kids I, so I would teach sometimes in Taiwan. I didn't want to learn it. I would just be like, oh, I'm, a, I'm American. Why do I have to, you know, learn this crazy, you know, hieroglyphic language or Egyptian language. So I kind of like fought it a little bit, which, you know, if I had a time machine, you know, or if I could tell, say anything to the younger audience out here or anybody in the audience, If you have the opportunity to learn a language, take it. Because at the end of the day, it'll help you in the future, occupation-wise, um, you know, personal life if you want to live somewhere else. But going back to what um, Mark was saying, I do think the easiest time to pick up a, a new language or to uh, do light language acquisition is when you're younger. And then, obviously, like... Uh, if you're in a situation where it, you're, it's it's demanded, like, you know, if all of a sudden they threw me and Mark in France and they were like, you get no food every day unless you could speak French. I think our French would improve uh, quicker than if it's we we're trying to learn France, French in like Taiwan or America. And then just to kind of put like a, you know, a ribbon on it. Um, I came to Taiwan in 2010. I didn't really speak any Chinese. So when I first got here, people would just say like, oh, Your Chinese is garbage, not good. Mm -hmm. then, it be, then it became after a while, oh, oh, your Chinese is cute. It's still <laughs> kind of garbage, but it's gotten better, so we're going to say cute. Because Taiwanese people are pretty friendly. They don't, usually for the most part, they're not going to say it, you know. And then it got to the point where it's like, oh, it's like, oh, it's not bad. So I'm still waiting where it gets to like, oh, you're a good uh which means like oh you can speak chinese like a genius and then this is kind of a different thing but i thought because i thought about it i've kind of like uh you know moaned to ryan and mark about it i don't know if mark has the same thing it's kind of like taiwan is a great country very friendly but there's one thing that kind of like i think it's funny i don't know if it triggers me but i don't know why it's like in my opinion or just my experience with other people If you're non-Asian and you 
show interest in the language. I don't know if Ryan had this experience. They'll be like, oh, you're Chinese, your Chinese is awesome. You're from where? You're from Kaohsiung. Where are you from? Are you from Kaohsiung? But when I speak Chinese, I get, I always get the like, oh, you're from Kaohsiung. Like, where are you from? Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Korea. And I'm always like, so I got to the point where I like, because I have a funny attitude, I'll be like, 对, 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 我是一个韩国明星怎么样? It's like, I'm a Korean celebrity, like, what of it, you know? So I don't know if Mark or Ryan, if you have that experience when you speak Chinese, like, what your feedback is, you know? Mark? Mm, well, uh, my parents aren't Taiwanese, and I wasn't kind of grew up in that kind of environment so I can't compare with that so uh, sorry I don't have anything for you okay <laughs> Ryan <laughs> well, well let me ask you well let me ask you this when you're in Taiwan and when you when you speak Chinese are people kind of like oh wait you're Asian so it should be better or they don't say anything or are they kind of like blase I'm just curious before I go to Ryan I'm just curious about that <clears throat> um well you usually in uh, the countryside, um, if I say like, "Oh, sorry, my uh, boy," so what is someone put high house? Then they will kind of have a confused face, like, "Oh, you're Asian. Uh, why can't you <laughs> yes. speak Chinese?" So yes. I mean, uh, like, it doesn't trigger me too too much. I mean, I mean, yeah. you you've got Asian people from Japan, Korea, like they probably have the same reaction for any of those, like. Okay. So, but of course, yeah. I don't know. Some Taiwanese they can, I don't know. Somehow they can tell, like if you're maybe from Korea or from Japan or somehow. So, but I've mm -hmm. I've had Taiwanese say, "Oh, are you Japanese? Are you Korean?" So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right, Ryan. Yeah, I was just gonna say to add to what Mark uh, was saying. Like one time, Mark and I we were out and. Uh, the guy said something to Mark, maybe something about like getting some food or something. Uh, and, uh, you know, Mark didn't really reply, but it didn't mean that he didn't understand necessarily. It is just like he didn't necessarily feel like talking to the guy trying to sell him something. And uh, so the guy assumed maybe that Mark didn't understand him. So then he thought he should maybe speak Korean or Japanese. So yeah, I think <laughs> in that situation, yeah, maybe, maybe people weren't sure like, well, is you know, this is Mark from Japan or is he from Korea? Um, something like that. But yeah, you never know. Like, I don't have that same situation, obviously. So people know that I'm not from here or from from Asia. In fact, um, but but if you yeah. but when you speak man but when you speak Mandarin, are they like pleasantly surprised? It's like, ooh, you just made my day, or like, how do they react to it? I guess. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's kind of weird. Like, I, th I like. I, I personally don't feel like my accent is very good, and mm. I do have a lot of people like tell me that my Mandarin is really good, but they will often think that I spent some time in like China or something because they assume that I've been in Taiwan a short time. How could my Mandarin be this good already? So they mm -hmm. assume that, oh, I, I must have studied in China. But I'm like, actually, I have yeah. never been to China. <laughs> So, and also part of my accent, because I don't speak uh, quite like Taiwanese accent, but I don't speak very strong like mainland accent either or China accent, but they do feel like because my, you know, my SH sound is stronger or these things like that, they do think, oh, I must have studied or learned from, from China. So uh, I do get that. And it's, that's a little bit, uh, I guess just a little bit frustrating, but yeah, I don't know. I just... I want to try to speak a little bit more clearly, and I've noticed that like Taiwanese people, they often speak um, a little bit softer, or I don't really want to say lazy, but some some words or some pronunciations like the like if you say ten or uh, something like that, uh, it may sound like four. Mm. The tones are different, but. Mm. You know, and just like speaking just naturally, just like out like or casually on the streets or whatever, I have heard people get confused. I remember uh, I was getting in the elevator and I asked somebody what floor and um, they said, S. I was like, OK, so I pushed four 
and, yeah. but they wanted to they wanted to go to 10 you know yeah. and obviously probably maybe if i could hear tones better maybe i would have known that it that they said 10 but i mean it really didn't sound anything at all like 10 it sounded exactly like four so that's the difference you know like su and sure like it's th that sort of thing i guess and in in china it's obviously very very like different you know they they pronounce 10 like sure like very very yeah. very strong uh sh sound right so i guess i kind of i'm somewhere in between you know like not too weak but not too strong uh so that's why they assumed that yeah but i, I, guess I have, for me the I have, biggest yeah i was just gonna Go say that for me the biggest problem and i think i mentioned it a little bit before um, sometimes I will get into the situation where uh, I am approaching somebody or I'm going to say something and they assume that I'm going to speak English, you know? Mm. So, like, if my pronunciation is not good enough, they're going to assume that I'm speaking English, you know? So that's why I have mm. to be very, very clear or very careful with what I say, um in order for that to not happen. But even in Japan or wherever I was, like, people see me, they're like, okay, white guy, he he's not from here, uh, and they're scared. They're like, they don't speak English or whatever, and they're like, and then, you know, so they just assume <laughs> we must right run away. away. They're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they think, okay, there's no way in the world that he's speaking Mandarin or Japanese or whatever, so they're just like, they're listening for English. And I've had several mm -hmm. times where I felt like I was speaking super, super clear in, you know, Japanese or Mandarin. And then they were just like, they just couldn't comprehend what I was saying because it's not English. You know, they really mm -hmm. thought I was going to speak English and they didn't have an open mind that I was actually mm -hmm. speaking, you know, Mandarin. But I, I do get that all the time. Like if I go to order a drink or I order some food or I'm reading the menu or something, they're always like, here you go. Here's the English menu. I'm like, no, 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 thanks. I can, I can read, you know, I can read. And they're mm -hmm. like, whenever I go to the drink shop and I, I'm about to open my mouth and tell them what drink I want, I can see mm -hmm. how relieved they are when <laughs> I speak Mandarin. They're like so relieved. They're so scared. Like, oh no, he's gonna, <laughs> Uh, he's gonna say something and I won't understand what he says, but yeah, so th these yeah. are the kinds of things that I experience I guess, yeah Right. I, I was gonna say two th I was gonna say two things uh, Number one, it's, it's, I, I kind of agree with your assessment, it's kind of like like, woo, I, I see a Caucasian person I want to practice my English, and it's a weird kind of like, I don't want to say conflict, it's like, I, I know a lot of Besides you, uh, there's a lot of like foreigners. They 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 are living in Taiwan because they want to practice their Mandarin. But then sometimes in Taiwan, a lot of Taiwanese people maybe they they're not like afforded the opportunity or they don't have the chance to. So when they bump into you, they're like, "Oh, this is like a golden. This is my like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory ticket. I want to speak English." So it's kind of interesting <laughs> that dichotomy that you're talking about. And then number two, I got a I got a plus one cosign on you. Uh, for my Chinese, since I've been here for such a long time, I, I would say it's at a conversational state. But my accent is all over the place. Like they're like, but people are always like, weird, uh, very interested because they, oh, why don't you adopt a Taiwanese accent? I was like, first of all, like, I don't want to do that. And hey, that's kind of like weird. That'd be like, you know, it's a little bit like, weird for me to try to do it, you know. And then B, I, that's the that's the issue I have, four and ten. So usually what I do, because sometimes it's just like I'm like, okay, okay. Well, suga, chi, ba, jiu, si, seven, eight, nine, or, or like, I want suga, e, er, san, si, one, two, three, four, just because sometimes I, I have that mess up all the time because you're right, because it's, it's what? E, er, san, si, and then 10 is what? Chi, ba, jiu, shi, right? It's something like very yeah. affected, correct? So it's like sometimes mm -hmm. you, when you're like in a rush, you just don't do that. So, um, but uh, going back to the topic, I would say I've been here, I don't know. I, you know, I'm sure we'll hear from these guys. Uh, when you first come here, for me, the part that improves the most is because you're living in a country where the predominant or official language is Mandarin. My Chinese kind of uh, improved incrementally, but it definitely improved over time. When I first, uh, growing up, oh, so going back to what I was talking about, growing up, uh, my parents would always speak Chinese to me. So actually my listening comprehension, kind of like what you were saying about your Spanish, the listening comprehension is really good, but then just being able to speak, it was kind of like 
maybe when I first got here, it was a little bit like, oh, I don't know what to say, or I'm gonna embarrass myself, that kind of thing. I always recommend people all who are, who are uh, cause a lot of people in Taiwan wanna learn English, same thing. It's better to uh, uh, try and fail than fail to try. Cause so many people are like, oh, I don't wanna make a mistake. I'll look stupid. Yeah, you're gonna look stupid, but that's the only way you improve. So for me, some of the techniques I do is like, you know, I have Taiwanese friends. Usually I will try to practice my Chinese with them. And we say, I will kind of practice review with them. And then I'll be like, oh, how do you use this word? Is this word right here? That kind of thing. It's kind of like, uh, I think as long as you manage uh, expectations and they're realistic, you can definitely improve. Um, I don't know, like Mark, what did you do? Or what tips or ways do you think people out there can do to, you know, improve their Chinese or whatever language they're trying to improve? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, for me, like, uh, I did study a little bit of Chinese before coming to Taiwan, and it was a bit rough because it, it, there's a similar situation with the Taiwanese. Like, they study English, and then after class, they immediately just go back to Chinese. And so mm. in America, I just had the opposite effect. Like I was studying Chinese and then right after class, I was just using English. And I had a lot of Asian friends, but they would never use Chinese with me. It's always English. So um, coming to uh, Taizong, studying Chinese at Fengjia University, Fengjia Dasha, um, I do remember um, a teacher telling me like, um, because of my personality as well, because uh, I'm kind of an introvert or nature. What? Um, <laughs> yeah. The teacher mentioned something similar to what uh, Ryan just mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Like, uh, you just had to Im immer immerse? Uh, or immerse. Like immerse, yeah. Immerse yourself into like listening uh, to music in that target language. or But the te teachers would say, oh, just... Um, like then she ting uh, Xingwen, just practice listening to news, and I'm thinking, how can I even understand what they're saying? But the 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 goal was just practice your listening to like your characters. So, and at the beginning, I thought, oh, that's that sounds crazy. I like, how am I supposed to improve by doing that? Um, but I like I did that a few times, and I realized afterwards, like, oh yeah, like you can. Even though I don't understand what they're, what people may be saying, but uh, I get kind of used to it, and so, and then when I kind of like try to practice, like I can kind of like um, mimic what they're saying. So, mm. um, so the, yeah, those uh, my teacher and uh, like Ryan had a kind of a good point, uh, especially like if you don't go out that much and it's like hard to. Um, interact with people sometimes so um yeah and then uh i think uh, uh having a hmm uh how to say this I, I know in the beginning i my my goal was to study on my own here in taiwan but uh, i had a friend he recommended i actually take chinese at my language school so um and what I realized after is like it was actually a good thing. It's it's a language school. It's almost like you going to go to the gym. You pay to go to the gym to work out, and so you pay to um, go to class. So you try to improve, and like if you have tests, then you try to study for those tests. And I think those during that time, it like your language usually improves. Um, I know like. For Ryan, he has different methods, um, the, especially the way he learned language. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I, I think it, it's, yeah, it's, learning language is a little different for everyone. So uh, I can only ex explain on my experiences and what I think is um, probably beneficial for someone who maybe uh, studying Chinese so or Japanese since I did study a little bit of Japanese um, but I was also kind of curious like on the other side 
Uh, I'm sure you guys have a lot of Taiwanese that come to you and ask you like, oh, like how do I improve my English? Like, uh, I've had a lot of students ask me like, oh, I want to be a native speaker, but I usually tell them like, uh, in America, there's actually a lot of different Americans. They all have different accents and different levels. Like, you can't always like when you say native speakers, like it can be a big range of things. So, and I think Edward, you mentioned something pretty important where you mentioned uh, students shouldn't be afraid to make mistakes. Usually, I say that to my students as well. Like, if you make mistakes, that, that's usually when you learn. So, and I think for Japanese, I think they are so afraid of making these, these mistakes, they don't even try um, speaking. So I don't know if you've ever had that experience, Ryan, since you've been there for longer than I have in Japan. So yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I guess for me though too, it's like uh, I think I often uh, how to say that. It's also something that I have a problem with as well. Um, I kind of take a different approach when learning a, a foreign language. I, I feel like, yeah, everybody always says just like start speaking and it's okay if you make mistakes, you learn along the way. But I have like a, a little bit of a different thought. I mean, I'm not telling people that they shouldn't try that because I do think that is a good method or a good way for a lot of people. But some people it might not work and, and kind of here's why. I think um, if you take a baby, for example, babies uh, spend the first several months or even years sometimes just listening, right? They listen to all the things around them. They familiarize the, themselves with all of the sounds and they look at everybody's lips and, and how they move and they pick up all these vocabulary words and then just one day they're just so ready and they're like okay now I am going to start talking and you know the baby just sat back and observed and just listened and then they took in all this information and then now they're ready and they're like already going to pronounce everything just you know pretty much like perfect or you know they may have to practice it a little bit you know when they start speaking for the first time but they're, they are native speakers right and so that's kind of the approach that I tried is I, I spent a lot of time just listening and learning, observing, not speaking, because a lot of people, what they do is they, I, I personally think, and I know a lot of people disagree with this, but I, I think that people speak before they're ready. They speak mm -hmm. before they learn the sounds. And what mm -hmm. happens whenever you do that is you often teach yourself the wrong thing or the wrong pronunciation so and a lot of other people don't uh realize how important it might be to correct you because also there's a thought that people think oh just let them speak you know if you correct them too much then they make they might get discouraged or something like that but um obviously everybody's different like some people want to be uh told when they're they've made a mistake or or that maybe they're like i don't care about pronunciation you know pronunciation is not important but for me it's, mm. it's pretty important um so i think like if you just start speaking like day one you know you're like okay i'm gonna learn arabic right and they're like okay and then you just take out a book and you just like start trying to say the phrases and stuff most likely your pronunciation is going to be horrible um and then once you get this stuck in your head it's really hard to change the way you pronounce these words and then you've this is what happened to japanese people uh at least maybe not maybe the younger generation is a little bit different but older generation they learned english using katakana which is one of their alphabets that they use to write foreign words so like that's where you hear these words like teburu is table, like uh, t-shirt is t-shatsu, shatsu like shirt. Um, all these English words that were like imported into Japanese, they were still pronounced with uh, like katakana sound. So mm. Japanese people thought, okay, this is how you say gurasu, gurasu, teburu, uh, you know chair you know chair chair they thought this is the way you pronounce it so 
they got in this habit of saying it and they don't know the real sound and they don't have any practice with the real sound so that's just how they continue to say it and, and whenever they go to speak to a native speaker uh, the native speaker doesn't understand what is chea chea <laughs> right and mm. whenever the native speaker says chair chair Japanese person doesn't know what is chair because they mm. only know what is chea right mm. so if you just start speaking day one or, or the first week or the first month or even the first year I think that you could get into these bad habits now I know that mm. I would say that not everybody should follow what I'm what I'm saying but I think it's a good idea to really make yourself uh, or to familiarize yourself with the sounds of the language first now I know not everybody's interested in reading but I love I love the foreign scripts I, you know I, I, I can read Mandarin uh, simplified traditional I can read Japanese here gonna cut the kind of kanji I can read Hangul I can I used to be able to read Thai I'm I've losing it you know I'm not using it so uh, but I just love all these different foreign scripts so for me I think that also helps because uh, with English or European languages whenever I see a new word it's hard for me to remember it because it's just like using like Roman or Latin characters but whenever I remember like whenever I see a, a word in Mandarin and I can see the character if I forget what that word was, I'll just picture it in my head, and I, I'll be like, oh, it really helps me connect to something, you know? So I think that that's a huge advantage when learning uh, another language like Mandarin, to be able to learn the character and then associate it with the picture or the image, and uh, it's easier to recall it later. So, um, so yeah, but uh, again, not everybody cares that much about their pronunciation. A lot of people don't care about uh, how to read the language. It's not necessarily uh, a must uh, to to be able to read it. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of the way I, I would recommend. You know, just like thinking about a baby, listen, absorb, take in a lot of information, and only start speaking once you fully understand the sounds. And I say grammar does not matter whatsoever forget about grammar because once you've taken in enough uh, knowledge and sentences and everything from native speakers it's just going to come out naturally and you don't need to really think about it. of course some languages that have more difficult grammar than others uh, that could be different but like Mandarin has pretty simple grammar for the most part um, mm. but yeah and like if you're just going to do like uh, vocabulary drills and grammar and stuff you're going to get bored right and you're not going to want to continue to learn the language so just try to have fun do something that you can uh enjoy like listening to music watching movies and so on you know i think that's the fastest way to learn it listen absorb do something fun forget about grammar forget about vocabulary drills and yeah it's enough for me so, yeah. first of all brian I can listen to your beautiful voice forever, but uh, no, I would say he, yeah, he has a good point. I, I'm gonna like piggyback what he said. You know, we're all different people. The, the way we learn, no matter what language or what anything, is kind of different. It's not like one plus one equals two for everyone. So I agree with what he's saying. You kind of have to be adaptive, kind of like I like to say. You kind of have to be like tap tofu. You kind of like have to absorb however you absorb. For me, uh, I would say like uh, I'm actually. A little bit of the opposite of Ryan and uh, Mark in that they can read and write Chinese at a, like a, a more advanced level than I can. My my uh, reading and writing not so good, but um, for me, what I did is when I got here or even now, what I want to do is first of all, you have to have a desire, right? Like growing up, my parents shoved me in all those schools. They wanted me to learn Chinese. They uh, Asian shame me they were like you gotta do this and then like I just didn't want to do it so number one most important thing is probably you know for sure you're gonna have to um, you have to have your own desire you know so, so that's number one and then number two when I got to Taiwan what I do now is I try to like what kind of what Ryan was saying I try to uh, not try to I'll, I'll watch TV shows in Chinese like Taiwanese programming I can't really watch the news because a it's kind of boring to me and then b it's a little bit fast 
So what I usually watch is, you know, either movies or I really like the, maybe some people don't like it, the variety shows because some of them are really funny and juvenile. So I think it, like, it, it kind of keeps my attention for a while. So, and then besides that, I don't know if they mentioned it before, there are other ways kind of people or techniques people use to try to improve their language. In Taiwan, a, a popular way is to kind of do language exchange where you you can meet in a group or you maybe like for me, I meet a Taiwanese person, they want to improve their Chinese uh, English. And then maybe it's like we do half an hour or an hour in English. And then, you know, the other half would be Chinese. And then just like Ryan and Mark had said, some people, they're kind of like, as soon as I make a mistake, I want you to correct it. Or other people are like, no, if I'm in the flow or like blah, 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 blah don't correct it right. So it kind of depends. And then actually going back to what Mark was saying before, uh, when I was teaching adults, you would always get the, okay, what is your uh, short-term and long-term long -term goal for English? I want to speak like you. Like, I want to speak like you right now. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't want to say it's impossible. So I would always say kind of at the end of the day, be the best version of you. Like maybe your English is not going to be as good as me, but maybe you could speak. We can kind of set little goals. Um, I don't know. Maybe Ryan and Mark have more experience with the language apps. I have them downloaded, but I never use them uh, like Playco and then the other stuff. And then I'm trying to think what else. And then um, I would say this. This is my experience. I don't know if this is the same experience that Ryan and Mark have. Because when you're in Taiwan, everyone speaks Mandarin your speaking comprehension will just automatically improve. Um, reading and writing, I really feel like you have to uh, put time and effort into it. You have to study it. For me, I've been doing my best, but I don't know, writing Chinese characters for me, I feel like my brain is like an iPhone, you know, six. It's just like not enough space there. And then like, as soon as I learn maybe like 10 characters, the other ones like go out my ear. So, um, I don't know, but um, I would say, yeah, at the end of the day, um, yeah, you, you definitely have to try. Um, the worst thing that, what's the worst thing that's going to happen if you speak Chinese and you make a mistake? It's not like there's going to be a hole in the ground that appears and you fall through it and then you die. It's going to, it's going to be a funny thing or, and then people are going to move on. Or actually when people are speaking with you in general, they're kind of focused on what they're saying a little bit. So then they, they might not even notice if you make a huge mistake. And if you do, it's part of the learning process, right? So I don't know if Mark or Ryan want to add anything else. That's my bit. Uh, uh, the only thing I wanted to kind of mention, kind of uh, when Ryan was talking about, um, like, um, as babies, like learning, listening um, before speaking, uh, it kind of just reminded me of uh, a friend, a mutual friend that Edward and I know. Um, and she's from actually from Cambodia, and uh, and she actually married a Taiwanese guy here in Taiwan, and she knew she didn't know any Chinese, um, and her uh, um, her husband's family spoke a lot of Taiwanese, Taiwan, and and I don't know, it, it, it's it's she has a really interesting story, and when she tells it, but I. Uh, remember like um when she was learning chinese and taiwanese she said she actually watched a lot of taiwanese drama tvs um i don't know if anybody in her uh, family actually helped her um with uh taiwanese or chinese but um but somehow she became really really uh fluent so and and her motivation was was because her family were like always giving her orders to do something and like and she didn't have a voice to say anything so she was just like almost kind of like a slave and and she just wanted to like have her own voice and like have her own opinion about things and so it's it's pretty pretty amazing story so um uh that's all i had to share um about that part did you guys have anything else i could probably talk all day about about this yeah but um yeah just uh keeping it 
short and relevant. Um, I, I, I was going to say, actually, um, one thing. Learning Mandarin in Taiwan can be a little bit difficult um, as there are a lot of people who will mix in Taiwanese. Mm. Um, and that part could be quite confusing for people, especially beginners of Mandarin. Um, to have a, have some people throwing in like some Taiwanese words sometimes, especially maybe older generation or people outside of Taipei. Um, and then the other thing, it's getting better now, but like now there's more of like a standard uh, system for how to write Mandarin words, uh, like how to Romanize them. Um, using the system from China, Pinin. Uh, there, there was a system here. I think it was called Wade Giles or something. There's been a lot of different romanization systems and whatnot. But sometimes in Taiwan, you will see in the train station or or an MRT station, you'll see the name, the same name written three different ways, uh, just with a different romanization. So that can be really confusing for a foreigner, especially a beginner, right? So. I do think that if you're learning Mandarin and you come to Taiwan, you do have to put in a lot of extra effort in the beginning to help distinguish between what's Mandarin and what's Taiwanese. And if you're not going to learn necessarily like the Chinese writing or uh, the characters, then how to Romanize and so on. Because like, you know, it's uh, now nowadays, like uh, a lot of the MRT stations, they're all using the standard romanization, but there's still a few like Dan Shui, like they don't they don't write it uh, with Pini, they still use like a different system, uh, like Jilong, uh, they don't write that one with the standard romanization, uh, but most of the other areas and and whatnot they do. Um, so yeah, that can be really confusing for. Uh, for people um, just starting out. Yeah. Here. Especially like yeah. uh, when I was studying Chinese in Taizong, like Taizong, like the Roman, Romanization, and then uh, is what? T A I C H U N G. But when you do the pinyin, the pinyin is T A I C O N G. It's a Taizong. Mm, Z H. And so. O N G. Yeah. yeah, Z H. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's very confusing for foreigners when they um, yeah. come to this realization so, yeah a lot of foreigners of that, sometimes. oh go ahead I was just going to say yeah like it's we may have mentioned it in previous episodes as well but a lot of foreigners will say like Tai Chung or you know something they don't know it's like Tai Chung Tai Chung because the way it's written is it looks like Tai Chung Right, yeah. and ex same with like Jilong. No foreigners ever gonna call it Jilong because they write it as Kilong, right? Mm. So yeah. mm -hmm. foreigners could never know that it's a G sound and not a Ki sound, unless they actually knew how to read the Mandarin, you know. Yeah. So it's it's yeah, it's kind of a tough thing. But I mean, you even look at the word Taipei in Mandarin; it's actually Taipei, mm -hmm. Taipei, right? And mm -hmm. as we mentioned earlier, like some of the sounds in Taiwanese Mandarin, it's a little bit softer. So like I noticed that um, like Mark had heard before, like Tai B, he, he heard maybe a little bit of like a P sound, but mm -hmm. it's just a very soft B sound in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. It's still Tai B, but it sounds like maybe they said Tai P. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know. It's it's not the easiest place, but I, again, I think if you if you listen to music, you watch some TV shows, movies, stuff like that, I think uh, you'll you'll pick up the sounds. And one thing that you mentioned was the variety shows. I think it's one of the very best ways uh, to learn Mandarin because it it could be funny, it could be interesting. They talk, they cover all different kinds of topics. They usually have multiple people on the show. Um, so it's really good in comparison to like a pre-recorded like, like TV show or movie with lines and everything like that because those are not quite as natural. So if you're watching like a like a variety show where you've got like two or th 
celebrity host and some special guest and maybe like a panel of foreigners over here all everybody speaking mandarin i think it's a good time it's like really funny it's really interesting and you can watch a lot of these episodes on like youtube or uh whatever mm -hmm. so i think that's a really great way to learn and one trick i was going to say you said that the news is a little bit too fast if you watch the news on youtube you can mm. slow it down you could ah. do like uh, 0.75 or 0.5 or whatever speed mm. and uh yeah maybe that would help too mm. i think that's about all i've got any any uh last tips or anything that you guys want to give to the viewer or anything about Mandarin or um, I think for me uh, I think the point where I thought that I was kind of improving um, my Mandarin my Chinese was actually when I was starting to use my Mandarin to communicate to my classmates um, of course you have some classmates are from Japan, some v from Vietnam, from Thailand. Um, they all come to Taiwan to study Chinese. And so, and, and they, they don't speak your mother language. They, they don't speak English. So I can't even communicate with them. So uh, when, and they're kind of at the same level as you are kind of. Um, so you kind of speak in their same level. And then, of course, you may have some classmates that may have a little bit higher level of Chinese than you. And that's when I started re realizing my Chinese was improving, was like hanging out with them and like going out and ordering food and stuff. And they were like kind of helping me out as well. So, so, and they could like kind of tell from my mistakes and stuff. So I thought that was very helpful. Um, and it kind of, uh, it's in, in some way, it was like the same in Japan. Uh, a lot of my classmates were from uh, Indonesia um, or from Vietnam, and they had studied a little bit of Japanese, so they were able to kind of like help me out and stuff. So, and that's so that's kind of like one great thing about studying a language at a language school. Like you have kind of like these people can help you out and stuff. So, for me, that's I feel grateful and I felt improvement from where from my studies so that's all I have cool cool well I guess um, I'll, I'll give a little plug real quick uh, for anybody who's interested uh, we have a line group and discord group also for language learning in particular um, so one is called language garden and the other one is called lingua virtua maybe we can try to leave a link below or something um, for anybody who's interested uh, we're in a line group and, and we have language practice um, or like a language exchange like an online language exchange every tuesday and thursday uh evening and it's like multiple languages it's kind of like it just depends who shows up but we have like over two thousand people now on our discord server and people come and they practice mandarin or japanese or english german um just a bunch of different languages and it's pretty international now we got a, a lot of people from taiwan uh japan singapore philippines uh more people joining us from like europe and stuff like that now so it's pretty cool so uh, like i said we'll try to leave a link below and uh maybe anybody who's interested can can join so I've been there, I so that's all I, got. I can vouch for yep. for that. So if you guys are in the Discord, you can find me there sometimes. Awesome. So. Cool. Did you have any last uh, words, Edward, before we end the episode? Uh, nope. I would just kind of uh, piggyback what, what both of them said. If you're interested in learning a language, it's not going to be easy. It takes time. There's various ways to do it. And then... Um, you, you just have to kind of uh, uh, be patient with it. You'll make, you know, incremental improvement, and that's all I can say. And then I was just going to say, um, again, you know, I want to thank, you know, all the listeners out there, all the viewers, our audience for kind of subscribing to us on YouTube or, you know, downloading our, uh, our podcast and following us on all the various social media facebook instagram twitter etc your comments and you know everything that you've said to us it definitely you know we read it 
it helps us and if there's topics that you think that we should talk about or things that you know you want to know feel free to kind of interact with us on those various social uh media platforms that's basically what i wanted, what I wanted to say yeah really Sounds great good all right well that's all the time we have for today in this episode uh we'll see you guys in the next episode where we i think we actually don't have a topic decided yet but we will uh surprise you guys so see you guys next time thanks Peace. for watching bye. and listening bye bye, bye.